Everyone, in this video, we're gonna go over the basics of how to operate a mini excavator. Check this out. Today we're going over our mini excavator. This is gonna be kind of a replacement of our mini excavator 101 we did a few years back. We thought we would do a, a fresh version of it, a new 2020 version. Uh, so today we're just gonna redo it. This is a beginner's uh, mini excavator overview. So what I mean is if you're an experienced operator, this probably won't add a lot of value to you. We're gonna go over really, really basic controls. We're not gonna get anything in advance in this video. Uh, with all my videos, I tell you up front, I'm not an expert. I like to tell people that. Uh, put it in the comments below if you have tips or tricks. I actually love reading the comments from people. We learn a lot from those. Um, and then everything else, we've already done our pre-op inspection. We have a separate video that covers pre-op inspections on a mini excavator. We'll link into that. We've already done that, as well as knowing our site. We know we're digging. This is our regular site, so we've had it. We, we know there's no utilities where we're digging. Those are obviously really key pieces. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and get in the machine. Now, the first thing for all heavy equipment, Make sure the doors lock open. Um, so today's a windy day, it's actually a good example of it. If I have it like that, it's gonna hit you in the back of the head. I've seen that with other excavators, dozers, things like that. Um, and there's a handle to grab. So you always wanna make sure any piece of equipment is locked before you try and get in. That way I can use it and it's not gonna hit me in the back of the head or I'm gonna pull on it. With all heavy equipment, again, they all latch open. They can be operated with them open. We usually have them closed when we're operating. It's really, it's operator preference. But you also know where all the releases are. There's on the mini excavator, there's a release right inside that'll allow you to close that door. And then the next piece is always three points of contact when you're getting in or out of equipment. It's extremely important. Uh, that's where most incidents actually happen, getting in or out of equipment because people try and jump in there. So make sure you maintain three points of contact. That's two feet in one hand, two hands, one foot. Either way, when you're getting up and in the equipment. Okay, close that up. Okay, once you're in, first thing, seat belts. Don't, uh, you'll hear me say this a lot in all the videos. Don't ever let anyone tell you not to wear a seat belt and heavy equipment. There's a lot of guys out there that may not wear them. What I tell people, it is no different than riding in the highway in your car. Uh, you really got to be secured to that piece of equipment. The equipment nowadays got rollover protection systems, this cage that you're in, as long as they're enclosed, but they're only, they only work if you're actually attached to it. Otherwise, you just tumble around through it or out the window when it breaks. So make sure you wear your seatbelt. Um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and with the mini excavator, this red bar, this is the safety lock lever over on this side. Uh, you've seen those on the bigger machines, but if not, this is basically like the parking brake. If this uh, is up, which means the door is open, uh, if it's up, it's safe. If it's down like that, the red bar is down. This is where it's operational. It, obviously, the machine's not going to start or anything like that when it's down like that. So right now it's up and it's uh, safe. Always we turn our key one click. Anytime I turn equipment on, you always just want to cycle it, let the systems uh, basically boot up. They're pretty uh, sophisticated machines nowadays and look and see if there's any error code. So Komatsu has digital display there. Uh, right now everything's good. We're good to go. Go ahead and turn it all the way on. Now this one, uh, Komat we're running a Komatsu PC30. I'm going to go ahead and there's an auto idle. I'm going to turn that off. There's a button right there. And really the only reason I'm doing that right now is our cameras in here. When this machine is at idle, it shakes. So uh, not typically what you would do, but we're going to run this thing at the higher RPM just so the cameras don't shake at all. Now again, we're in a Komatsu PC30 mini excavator. We'll link to that down in the description if you want more info, information about it. After I turn it on though, again, I'm walking at, looking at my gauges again to make sure I don't see any issues, any uh, alerts or anything like that. Okay, so now the controls on a mini excavator. Again, this is our beginner, a very entry level, assuming someone's got very little stick time in there. Uh, it's basically your right is your boom and bucket. Boom is the big arm that's connected to the excavator itself. Bucket is at the end. And so that's your boom and bucket. Left is your stick and swing. The stick is that arm that connects the boom to the bucket. Uh, sometimes in other countries, I've heard it called a dipper. Uh, again, generally I would call it the stick in the, uh, in the US, but again, different terminology, it's the, the stick there. And then the swing or swivel is left or right with that left joystick. That basically spins the cab one way or the other. 
So those are your primary controls. The additionally, I'm going to show you a thumb control on here, which is going to be my hydraulic thumb there. This little uh, lever right here goes back and forth like that. That's how I'm going to control my thumb. That's basically everything on the top. And then the track system below is going to be where you're going to use the track paddles here. Now these ones, again, most operators are running with their feet. New operators, I usually teach to do one or the other. So you're either driving uh, or you're up top. So you're either going to be tracking with these things back. And again, each one of those are independent of each other. You see, they go both ways. Um, or you're up here. Uh, again, as an expert, when you get better at this, you'll have both hands on both doing like this. But as a beginner, don't overwhelm yourself. If it has to, to dumb it down, just do one at a time, either be driving uh, or be up on top. And then otherwise down low, this, there's nothing here. Uh, this is actually a uh, backhoe swing. At least that's what I call it. I don't know what the technical term, but it basically swings just the arm. So instead of, there's two ways to, to swing a mini excavator. One is the entire cab will do 360s. The other is just swinging the arm left or right. This little thing here will actually just turn the arm back or forth like that. And then you can flip it out of the way if you want to rest your foot on it. That way it keeps it from engaging. Okay, so now I'm going to go over those controls real quick. We're going to put that down. So now everything's live. Every time anything's live, you shouldn't have anyone up near you. Uh, this is where now if I bump a control, it's going to move. So with that, if I put my right hand on this right joystick, again, if I pull back, raises the boom up. If I go forward, boom down. If I go to the right, it'll open the bucket. Then if I go to the left, it will close the bucket. That's all right. Now again, uh, actually I didn't say it yet in this video, we're running ISO or standard controls. Uh, you're also gonna hear different people, there's different excavator control patterns. Newer machines all are interchangeable, meaning there's a valve or a switch. On the Komatsu, it's right underneath the outside entry door. There's a little panel that you can switch it. Um, a lot of them, and actually you can see here, if you guys see this, it's got ISO pattern there. Uh, that's what I'm on. And then if you can flip it, it, the lever on the other side has got backhoe pattern on the other side. Uh, ISO, I've heard them called cat controls. That's what I learned. I think that's probably the most standard. I always recommend learning those. I think they're the easiest. Backhoe just flips it. So it basically takes your boom, puts it on your left joystick, stick, uh, your stick is on your right. Um, but once you learn one way, you're probably gonna be committed to that way. So ISO if at all possible. Left is my stick swing. So if I push forward, pushes the stink, stick out, pull back, it's gonna bring the stick back in. If I go to the left, it'll swing the cab left. If I go to the right, it'll swing the cab to the right. And there is no hard stop on the swing. You'll see these things just go all the way. So those are my joysticks. The final piece I have that uh, I didn't go over on the right side was my accessories. So usually there will be buttons or switches uh, on this. If I push to the right on this thumb, on this with my thumb here, it actually operates my thumb. And if I pull back, it will retract it. So one way or the other, that's how you operate it. You, if you saw our other mini excavator video, Komatsu Switch, which I'm, I'm glad because I really like the finger controls better. It used to be there's a foot pedal that will operate thumb. So you might get in some machines that will do with the foot. Again, we do these videos. I try and keep them somewhat generic. So no matter what type of equipment you get into, they pretty much operate very similar. So those are that contr the controls there for the thumb. Uh, and then the final one I kind of showed you when I was just talking there is the backhoe arm. So you'll see if I go left on the left side of that, it swings just the arm. If I go to the right, it swings it to the right, one way or the other. This is really handy. Uh, you know, if you're trying to get into a really tight area, like digging a foundation or something, you can really get the excavator right up next to the wall there. And that's why they do these is uh, you can hang that pivot point. You know, when I swing my cab, my pivot point is kind of where my seat is almost. When I put that up there, it's actually out in front of me. So you can almost hang this over the edge a little bit and you can swing. So it's a little bit easier to get into a tighter area. Rarely do I use it when you're out in the open. Usually the best way is to have that arm fairly straight. So as long as I can see out my front window and see my bucket, uh, that's really the only time. So I usually will disengage this and leave that like that. Other than that, so those are the controls I talked about at top. Other than that, there's really nothing on display. You saw me, I adjusted an auto throttle on there. There's some work modes. I mean, know your, I always tell you, read the manual on the machine you're in. There's going to be different features you're going to want to know on there. 
Uh, then the only other controls is the blade. There is a, a blade on the front of these things. Most mini excavators have them. This good just pulls back up or down one way or the other. Uh, they can also, I, they're like a dozer blade, they'll push. Uh, I also call them a stabilizer bar. Uh, because minis have such a small footprint, sometimes you need to, well actually always, you need to push that down to kind of st stretch out that base on where you're digging. Uh, it makes it a more stable machine. So that's a lot of times you're always going to dig with that uh, down on the ground. Speed setting on the Komatsu is on the top of that blade control. If I click this, my track speed. It's just got a high or low, and I'll know on the display it says basically high or low. And other than that, I got my throttle, which you already saw there. I adjusted lights on this, and then my climate control here. Uh, and that's about it for that. So now, final pieces is our tracks. If you see, and I'm going to do hands just to show you. If I push this right one, it goes the right one forward like that. And if I go to the left push the left one forward or back. And they are independent of each other. Usually you don't ever want to do hard. If I were to push one forward, one reverse, it'll literally do a 360. You want to try and avoid that. You want to, uh, you know, that's going to tear up your ground. So you try and keep one moving all the way and you might let off the speed a little bit, uh, but you always want to maintain some forward motion on both tracks. So if I do this, I'm going to drive forwards track forward a little bit. So again, you'll see how I can adjust a little bit of steering there. Now, uh, for digging, with the blade placement, first of all, you generally want to dig in line with your tracks. That's where your machine, especially with your blade there, it's the longest, uh, so you're the most stable. Once you start digging off the sides, you're not quite as stable with this machine. I'm going to show you that in a second. Uh, now, a couple different schools of thought with the blade in the front or back, and we've done videos on them both. Uh, for a lot of new beginners, I often like to have the blade up front, mainly just to protect the front of the machine. Uh, as you can see, these buckets with a standard bucket on, they are designed so they won't hit the cab, they won't, you know, there's nothing that's going to damage anything on the machine itself. Now that's with a standard bucket. If you have any kind of accessory on there or a quick attach, that may extend it and that may not be true. But with that said, these machines, based on the arm they have on them, they generally can reach the corners. So you'll see uh, I can clip a corner here. Uh, so that's usually why I like to dig for a brand new beginner, have that blade out front because it's just a big old chunk of steel out there. So if they hit that, I'm not worried about versus a rubber track, something like that. Uh, now, with that said, you're always going to put that blade down. So I want to apply a little bit. And you'll see how this will raise my machine. You just want to be applying a little bit of downward pressure there. Then, new operator, I always start just having that bucket all the way out, or the stick all the way out, sorry fully extended. Again, the further you are from the machine, generally the less trouble you're going to get into. Uh, so that's why I use that distance from my machine. Now for brand new operators, we teach with the teeth kind of straight down. Um, keep in mind, there's a beginner, there's an advanced, there's, I mean, you're going to go through stages in learning how to operate. Uh, I like to do this as a beginner, but in reality is you're going to do more layers off. You're almost going to have those teeth curled in at a 45 and you're going to scrape off maybe six inches at a time. This is in case there were underground utilities or anything like that. Uh, but that also means that you have to know how to do multiple controls at the same time, which is not normally what a new operator can do. So again, I try and dumb it down. I want you to learn the machine. So I can do all this. See my left hand on and on there. I put my right hand in there get the teeth in the ground just a little bit and then just curl that bucket up. Digs right through till it stops. I can then pull the boom up, raise it up. And then, you know, get four or five feet. And then with my left hand, that's where I swing. Again, you never want to dump too far away from your hole because you need to put it back in there. And then right hand right to open it. So that's as simple as really there's three controls there that you can, if you were to just use those to dig. Now that's not, you know, so I'll keep doing that. I, and you'll see if I push down harder, and I'm going to show this in a sec you'll see how it'll start to push up that front end. Uh, that's where, when we talk about stability with the machine, I'm gonna show you something on a different dig position here. But once you go down, this machine you generally won't get, the bucket won't get stuck. But if it were, you'll see I can curl all the way through that. Sometimes when it gets stuck, that's fine. You just hold your curl and then you pull back at the same time. And you're kind of closing and raising the boom at the same time. And I'm raising it up a few feet, left hand over, and then I'm dumping. 
Now, that was with my stick fully extended. Now again, that's not gonna be reality. This is how a brand new operator, your first time running the machine, I would want you to go out and do this. Just get used to those controls. But then you'll see how I can dig as I pull this stick in, my teeth, everything's attached to it. You know, so my teeth are curling in, so I wanna have those. I'm gonna open that bucket, keep bringing it in. Now I can do the same thing. Now that I've repositioned the stick, I can go down there, teeth in, and just curl through the bucket. Raise it up, swing over, and then to extend it back out, I'm going back out with that left hand to push it out. That's generally also why I like to start far out because you wanna try and avoid having to move your tracks. That's not very efficient. You wanna be able to try and use that entire length of the arm to scrape up to your blade, then pick your blade up, back up, and you can go further if you're trenching. Now, again, that's the way, brand new, first time doing it. That's not, what I want you to practice then is I would say the more regular way where my teeth you see they're curled in a little bit and then I'm coming down now this is see how watch how I do multiple things so I'm kind of scraping I'm even opening my bucket here a little bit as I go in here and I'm just scraping and then at the end of the trench the other thing you start practicing is actually if you back off a little bit so I'm pushing my stick out while I'm curling my bucket what that allows is the dirt to fall back into the trench instead of leaving you see how my first couple left a giant mound of dirt so those are the little things you want to practice. So that's that. Now the other way I want to show you, I'm going to spin around. The other way I actually like to dig, uh, and it depends on the size of the mini excavator running, but I like to have the blade in the back. Um, and there's a, if I push that downward pressure, if you have it behind you, there is no way I can't lift this machine up. It's much, to me, much more stable when it's in the back like that. So I generally will dig with the blade behind. Do not, there is not a right or wrong answer here. So I'm not gonna, even in the comments, you can put below what your preference is if you're an operator. Uh, but that's where you'll see it, it just uh, changes that pivot point, that fulcrum, when you're pushing down the back there. That's where your counterweight is and everything like that. I'm just gonna fill that one back in. So, after you get good, the one thing is, so people, new operators often want to know, how do they get, how do you get better at doing that scraping in there? I call it a raking exercise, and what it really entails, get your teeth, be in an area where it doesn't matter if you kind of mess up the ground a little bit, but you get your teeth where they're in the ground like this, and you can actually, the exercise is to rake those teeth in and you don't you always want to be able to see daylight between the teeth there so i don't want it ever to go all the way up to the bucket and i also don't want the teeth to come out of the ground you'll see i'm opening my bucket and i'm trying to control i'm pulling this boom up stick in i'm doing multiple motions here at the same time and then actually once i get past that pivot point i actually have to push the boom back down you see how i popped out there so you'll see do this i did this for a lot when i started and it made it much I got much better at this. The other thing I'll recommend for a new operator is throttling it down. Um, the higher the power you have going there, the more jumpy the hydraulics are gonna be. So if I just throttle that thing down a little bit, my hydraulics aren't nearly as sensitive. And you see, I'm just practicing raking that. All the way in, you'll see I have to push the boom back down. So it kind of hits that fulcrum point on where the stick is connected to the boom. I'm gonna throttle it back up. Okay, and then backfilling. Um, so now that we, and, and I'll show one more here. That's when it more relative, when you're in the bottom of a trench, you're kind of curling up and you're trying to get that flat bottom there on the trench. So you'll see how I come in. That's how that is a practical, what you're actually gonna use it for. And again, backing off a little bit to try and have a little bit uh, more flat bottom there. The other thing, again, you're doing about maybe six inches at a time. You're just doing layers off. This is mainly because if there are utilities, if for some reason you're gonna find there's stuff buried there you didn't know about. Instead of taking a big old bite out of it, you wanna do layers. Dump this right back in there. And then again, scooping if you can. There's some, sometimes you can try and use the side motion on the bucket. They're not great for the pins when you go lateral motion, but I'm gonna show you here in a second how to use the blade. 
The final piece I didn't really show, and I don't have anything to pick up here, but understanding your, your thumb control. The big thing with that is watch, this is as far as it goes. So I tell people you really have to be careful how far out you go with that, and you'll have to pinch. Actually, there's a rock there I might be able to get. Oh, look at that, so I was able to get that. So I'm able to get pinch things in between there. And this is good, I like using rubber tires I don't have around, but anything you have that you can get better at. And then just open that up and then retracting this all the way. I like to keep the thumb out of the way when I'm digging, uh, just to keep that thing retracted, uh, doesn't get in your way at all. So you can practice, usually I like to have that thumb, I get the tooth really placed right on the other side of the object and then come in, squish that thing like that. You'll see it's locked in there on that one. So that's how you can get better with that. Okay, now, real quick, and traveling position one, one we are uh, tracking with this thing. I recommend straight to your tracks. It's a lot, it's just more confusing. You can drive it any way you want the other ways, but um, this is where using your feet, and then I'm just going up and down. I'm gonna push this front of this trench in a little bit. I'm raising it back up. Now, depending on the machine you have, uh, some uh, mini excavators will have a blade that's more adjustable, left to right. This is a fixed blade, so you're not gonna get that as much. So it's literally just up and down. A typical dozer is gonna have six different pitches on it. It's gonna have a up, down, left to right, the tips, and it's actually gonna swing the blade. See, mini excavator is not fast. That's the other tip too. Make sure you unload the mini as close to the job site as possible. I'm in low right now, but. So as you're coming up to that pile, I'm just lowering that blade down. Ideally, get as lined up without you having being able to swing the blade. It's really important to get this lined up as straight as possible. There we go. Again, this is our basic one. I'm not going to go over any of the advanced maneuvers on this one. Then for parking, always make sure your blade is flat on the ground there and then bucket flat on the ground. You don't ever want to leave a hydraulic up in the air at all just too much risk of, I mean, it will relax over time. So you always wanna make sure everything's down on the ground, square to your track so it's easier to get in and out. After that, safety lock lever up, that disengages everything. Throttle it down, shut the machine off. And then again, getting out, make sure that door's locked open. Locked open. And then three points contact. Okay, everyone, that's our beginner guide to how to operate a mini excavator. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, put comments below if you have any tips and tricks that you've learned. I uh, appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks.